Hi, my name is Ryan, and today we will be discussing an FPGA implementation of a network switch that utilizes a bloom filter for security purposes. We will first discuss some background about how network switches work, and then explain what bloom filters are. Lastly, we will go over optimizations we made via HLS pragmas and the subsequent results of our project. So a network switch connects a variety of different devices onto one singular network using Ethernet, uh, and this network switch is responsible for managing data flow from one device to another. Uh, now, network switches come in a variety of different shapes and sizes. As you can see, the one on the right is external to the router. Um, some smaller network switches might even come embedded into the router. Some might only have five ports. Uh, the one on the right you can see has 24 Ethernet ports. Um, the switch that we ended up implementing has 20 ports. And they also come in a variety of different speed categories. Some switches are only capable of doing tens or hundreds of megabits per second. Uh, some faster switches are capable of doing gigabits per second. And even more high quality uh, network switches are capable of doing on the scale of tens of gigabits per second. So here's a high level overview of how the router works. So first we have some sender and it sends a packet with data to the FPGA. And the FPGA has already done some pre-processing to make the routing and bloom tables. And then once the incoming packet is received, it will do three operations in parallel. So we'll do a bloom filter in order to determine if the source IP address was in a table of known hacker addresses. If it isn't, then we know that the packet is authorized and we can send it out whatever port it was going to be sent out of. Then we also have a checksum, which will determine if the data is still valid. If the data has changed by even one bit, then the checksum will be completely different and it will be invalid. So checks that, and then it also does routing using the destination IP address to determine where the packet should go out physically, if it should go out the top or bottom port to go to different networks. We made some simplifications for the network switch compared to modern network switches because they are much more complex than ours. They do flow control, congestion control, they do local network math, they do all kinds of things, and they especially use TCP, which is a lot more complex than UDP is for networking. And with that, we only do the network and transport layer. We don't do the link or physical layer, since that's more of a byte by byte decoding, which is already done by host.cpp sending information serially. Again, we use U UDP only, which is like a stripped version of TCP, which is commonly used for persistent connections and making sure that data is acknowledged. This has no acknowledgements, just we simply send a packet and hope that it gets there. Um, we also only send information, um, we only send the information on where the packet's supposed to go rather than physically outputting the packet since we're only able to communicate with the FPGA across a serial port. So we can't have the packet going out of different serial lines and having it come back to host.cpp. Here's an example of um, what our header is. We essentially based it off of the Wikipedia page for UDP. So we just have our source IP address, our destination IP address, source port destination port, the length of our data, um, and our, of course our checksum. And then we basically omitted that third line since we don't really um, use the protocol number for anything, nor the padding bits or the second UDP length since we already have a length element. To ensure packet integrity, UDP utilizes checksums that are calculated based off of the contents of a segment. To calculate checksums in UDP, a segment's contents, including headers, are first each turned into 16-bit operands. Then, each of these elements are added together to form a sum, which is then logically negated. 
This result is the checksum for that segment. Generally, this calculation is completed by the sender and receiver, so that all a receiver needs to do to verify a message is see that both checksums are the same. For our security measure, we utilize bloom filters. Um, for those who are unaware, we decided to dedicate a slide to showing what a bloom filter is at a high level. So we can implement a security protocol by pre-training a bit array and utilizing hash functions as indexes into the array. So that is visible by the graphic on the right. We're able to take an X, which in our case is um, an IP address, and we're able to push it through multiple hash functions. Each of these hash functions return an index into our pre-trained bit array. Um, if any index returns false, the IP address is not allowable for a switch and is flushed to a flag port. This can go to a security software or security personnel, and they'll handle the, the IP address or it could obviously just get squashed. Um, this also could be implemented in the reverse way if you want to just catch specific IP addresses rather than having um, only a specific set of IP addresses allowable. Uh, pros of this is that it's very simple and it's cost effective. It's made to be low cost. Uh, for our case, we don't utilize multiplication or division to save on computation time. Uh, the con of this, though, is that we have a fixed false positive rate. In our case, it's roughly around 3%, which is fairly low. Um, but this is a bad implementation because that doesn't allow IP addresses to still slip through. Now, so our implementation involves two functions. We have insert bloom, which is training the bit array, which we call at the start of a test, and it pre-trains a, a list of IP addresses into our array. And then lookup bloom, which verifies the IP addresses in network in our case. So in the routing section of the implementation, there are five main steps that need to be accomplished. The first is that the destination IP of the data packet being sent is taken and anded with this, uh, all the subnet masks in the routing table. And then this result is compared against the corresponding IP address in the table. If there is one match, it returns the output port. Uh, if there's more than one match, it returns the port with the longest subnet mask. And then if there is no match, it returns the default output port, which is just zero. So you can see an example on the right where 128.81.13.16 is the destination IP of the packet. Um, and it is masked with all the subnets uh, within the table. And there are two matches with 128.81.13.0. And it picks port. 2 over port 1 because the subnet mask is longer uh, in port 2. So the way we did testing is we wanted an easy way to automatically produce packets. So we decided the easiest way to kind of abstract that idea was just to make a Python file. And so the Python file, essentially, we give it um, all of our example packets, and then it will store those packets serially. It will store them. It will put them in byte format and then we'll store them serially in a test packets.dat file. And then whatever outputs we expect, it will also store serially in test outputs.dat. And then depending on if we're doing a software or an actual FPGA test, they'll be grabbed by either switch test.cpp and host.cpp. And then they'll store them in their own arrays containing all the data and then they'll send them to the FPGA. Looking at optimizations and results now, we know that we have an overhead of about 40 cycles. This is due to pre-training the bloom filters on every run. Um, our biggest crutch here was bloom filters hashing functions. Unrolling all those functions, we're able to bring down 258 cycles to 52 cycles for both functions in total. That's tremendous speed up. We continue unrolling in checksum, routing, and data read-in. Uh, data read-in doesn't have a tremendous speed up because it does take about 60 cycles unoptimized. This is because we also need to partition the array we use in C++, um, bringing down the 57 cycles to four cycles, which is reading in very fast now in comparison. Uh, without optimizing, we have a throughput about 402 megabits per second. Uh, we want to achieve more modern rates. So with optimizing, we're able to get a throughput of 1.657 uh, gigabits per second, which is great. Uh, this doesn't come without cost. So we, uh, we do utilize much more LUTs and flip-flops in comparison to our baseline design. However, this still doesn't even take up a fourth of the resources available to us on the FPGA. Showing the, a quick demo that operates on uh, the FPGA we use in this class. So we're able to show a successful run in about 31 uh, milliseconds. And that concludes a network switch implemented on FPGA utilizing HLS software.